Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Compassion. My name is Pastor Chris, and this morning we're going to simply talk about being happy with what you have. Well, again, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Chris, and uh, this whole week we've been focusing on the series that Pastor House started this past Sunday called Buck Wild. And my encouragement to you is if you can be with us Sunday morning uh, to uh, to listen to the second sermon in this series, I think you will be immensely blessed and will probably help those of us who may be struggling a little or a lot with our finances to begin to reel things in into God's plan. Uh, but if you're not able to be there in person, that's okay. Uh, feel free to join us online. And uh, meantime, if you like what you hear on these Coffee with Compassions each morning, I strongly encourage you just to take a moment and share it on your social media so that maybe others can be blessed by the message that they hear today. Uh, but I'm only going to talk for, for just a few moments. Uh, about myself. And um, I'm going to be a little transparent if I can be. I don't want to go into great detail, but um, I'm one of those people, probably like most of you that are watching, that at one time or another have found yourselves uh, in a financial pickle. Uh, maybe you have more debt than you have income, or maybe you just have a significant amount of debt that is just crushing at times. You're paying out a ton of interest, um, not any money in savings. You know, you're one lost paycheck away from being in real trouble. And I want you to know this morning that I have been there many times and uh, that God has blessed me, especially over the last couple of years, as Tina and I have refocused our financial principles to be good stewards as God taught us. But to be transparent on my end, I wanted to share that the reason I feel like Tina and I got into the place that we did, we, excuse me, I was really bad at times um, making purchases uh, for myself, uh, that were more hobby related than anything. And, uh, I know a lot of men out there as, as especially can say that with either with fishing gear or hunting gear or, or guns or sports or you name it, it doesn't take much of anything for it to become a hobby. And then you use the label expensive hobby. And, um, I'm just a collector of things, a lot of things that are sports related. And for me, there was always this kind of, uh, uh I don't know, just a euphoria when I was able to make a purchase of something that I really wanted and oftentimes I found that once I enjoyed it for a few days, it would go into a storage box for use later. And of course, later has not come yet, and I'm 50 years old, so I don't have any more laters I have to enjoy these things. But uh, several years ago, our finances got to the point where uh, I really felt like I needed to take a hard look at things and begin to make some changes. And um, what was one of the guiding principles was last uh, no November, I'm sorry, when Pastor began uh, the series on financial wellness that we did, and I heard a lot of things that were very eye-opening to me spiritually. But one particular scripture that I have come across in my own studies that speaks to me, especially about this circumstance, was this, and it's found in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. And it simply says, Keep your life free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And what spoke to me in that scripture, first and foremost, was the word, be content with what you have. For me, not to spend too much time on this, but the hobby that I have, I've actually had since I was uh, in my really pre-teen years. Um, and it, it relates to sports, and I have enjoyed this hobby immensely. I share it with friends, both here at church and all over the country. And uh, <clears throat> collecting uh, various parts of this hobby uh, has just been something that has just been exciting for me, as I guess anybody that has a hobby would understand. But as with any hobby, you can put that money in front of uh, you know, paying bills, or you can go into debt where your bills increase, uh, or it could simply be that you're putting that money in front of giving generously to others. Some of us may even forego paying our tithes, um, which you know is not breaking God's bank account, but it's breaking the blessing that God has for us when we are obedient in our giving and our tithing. And so when I got to the place where I realized that I needed to be content, I started doing an inventory, if you will, of what I'd collected and realized that if I had planned to enjoy those pieces of that hobby, I would have to live to like three, 400 years old to be able to do what I wanted to do with this hobby. Now, for some of you are saying, well, what is it? If you, you want to come find me at church, I'll, I'll be glad to share it with you. But the thing of it is this, is that we only have a limited amount of time in this world and in this life. And God calls us to be good stewards of everything he has blessed us with, with our family, our time, and our money. And in this particular case, I realized I had way more than I needed, 
And as a result of my desire to want to collect, I was not really being content with what God had blessed me with. I kept wanting more and more and more. And I think a lot of us can relate to that when it comes to whether you want to purchase uh, ammunition or guns, uh, cars, uh, video games. You can see this with younger people. It, for women, it may be shoes or purses. I don't know. I don't want to be sexist. But for all of us, if we're not careful, we can be in a place where we're not content with what we have. And that goes back then to the first part of the scripture when it says, keep your life free from the love of money. Oftentimes, we want to pursue a second job, maybe a different career that pays more than being happy with where we are and living contently in the life that God has blessed us with. So here's my challenge to you today. As Pastor challenged us this week, he said, go through your credit card statements, go through your bank statements, and look at, are there areas that you're spending money where you don't need to spend money? Or maybe you're spending it in areas that that are frivolous and maybe is not needed to go and in, going into the debt that we sometimes go into. Well, I'm going to add to that challenge in one small way. Examine your closets, examine your hobbies, examine those things where you have spent money and maybe you're not using it for anything. It's just something you had to have. If that's the case, here would be my challenge. If you have an excess of like clothes because you just keep buying clothes and you maybe only wear it once or twice and never again, there's a clothing bank in Rafford that generously helps families, especially this time of year, that need clothes and they need them inexpensively. How about you box up some of that and just say, Lord, forgive me for the excess and just bless somebody with it. Maybe it was looking at your credit cards and saying, it's time that I pay this one off for good. Here's a little tip about me. I've paid off four credit cards in just the last three months, and I'm setting up myself to pay off three more different types of small loans and things in the next six months. And I'm going to free up a lot of my income at that point. And my prayer is that God directs me to a place where I can be generous to others because I know that God has been generous to me. So I challenge you, just take a look. Where is your money going and what can you do with it that makes you both a better steward and allows you to be a blessing to others? Hope you didn't mind my transparency today, but sometimes it just helps to hear it from another person. I don't know. But with that said, let's just pray real quick. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the message about our finances. Heavenly Father, the message this week about our giving and being good stewards. Heavenly Father, I pray that each of us just take a little bit of time to examine where our money is going. And Lord, as we pray about it, Lord, help us to be more obedient and being good stewards, Lord, to where you would have us spend what you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Guys, you have a great day. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.